Long before the age of humans, when mammoths roamed and giant sloths wandered the earth, there existed a predator, the saber-toothed tiger. With fangs as long as daggers and jaws built not just to kill but to slaughter, it was the ultimate Ice Age assassin. But where did this nightmare of muscle and bone come from? Why did nature forge such a terrifying creature? And why, after millions of years, did it disappear forever? This is the story of the saber-toothed cats, where death got its sharpest teeth. Contrary to popular belief, the saber-toothed tiger, more accurately called Smilodon, a genus that arose approximately 2.5 million years ago, thriving until about 10,000 years ago. These cats were not tigers, despite the nickname. They were their own unique branch of the feline family, distinct from modern lions, tigers, and leopards. So this is a short introduction of Smilodon, and let's begin towards the detailed explanation. In a world where survival meant more than strength, it meant strategy, precision, and cooperation. The saber-toothed tiger, or Smilodon, ruled with unmatched authority. But this predator wasn't just a brutal killer. Behind the fearsome fangs was a life of cunning, competition, and community. Now, we step inside the shadowy world of the Sabretooth to see how it hunted, lived, raised its young, and battled rivals on the Pleistocene stage. So, imagine the world 20,000 years ago, deep in the Pleistocene epoch, stretching from North to South America. The Ice Age was in full swing shaping ecosystems with glaciers, cold winds, and open grasslands known as the Mammoth Steppe. Towering mammoths grazed the plains. Giant ground sloths clawed through vegetation. Herds of bison, some twice the size of today's, thundered across grasslands. Predators prowled in deadly numbers. Amid this chaos, Smilodon reigned as an apex predator. But being king was never easy. Smilodon wasn't just another big cat. Its entire body was a carefully crafted killing machine. Muscular build. Unlike sleek, speedy cats, Smilodon was compact, stocky, and immensely strong, especially in the forelimbs and shoulders. This power was essential for grappling prey. Sabers. Those 12-inch serrated canines were made for slicing, not puncturing. Precision was key. A single wrong move could snap the fragile teeth. Jaw mechanics. A jaw gape of 120 degrees, far wider than any modern big cat, allowed Smilodon to maneuver its deadly teeth around thick hides and into soft tissues. Paws and claws. Equipped with large, retractable claws designed to grip and hold, Smilodon's paws were more like grappling hooks than simple killing tools. Together, these traits defined an ambush specialist, one that relied on brute force, pinning prey before delivering a precise, fatal throat slash. Smilodon's hunting was a masterclass in timing and power. The stock Smilodon wasn't built for long chases. Instead, it lurked in wooded areas or tall grass, waiting for prey to wander too close. The ambush with explosive energy, it lost launched forward, using sheer power to knock prey off balance or to the ground. The pin its forelimbs, immensely muscled, held the prey in place, much like a wrestler pinning an opponent. Then came the sabers. Carefully avoiding bones, Smilodon aimed for the neck, windpipe, and arteries. A deep slice and the prey would quickly bleed out or suffocate. Smilodon was not designed for messy, protracted fights. Now we talk about the daily life of a saber-tooth. Smilodon likely maintained large territories patrolling them to keep rivals away and secure hunting grounds. One of the most fascinating debates among paleontologists is whether Smilodon was a solitary hunter like tigers today or a social predator like lions. Evidence from sites like the La Brea Tar Pits offers tantalizing clues. Multiple Smilodon individuals found together. Some skeletons show healed injuries that would have left the cat unable to hunt alone, implying pack members may have helped feed injured companions. The high density of Smilodon fossils at a single site suggests group behavior, perhaps scavenging together. If Smilodon was social, it might have hunted and coordinated packs, shared kills, raised cubs communally. Smilodon did not hunt in peace. The Ice Age was filled with competition. Dire wolves, large, social, and formidable in packs. They competed for the same prey and perhaps even scavenged from Smilodon's kills. American lions. Bigger than African lions, they were powerful, solitary hunters. Another apex predator in Smilodon's domain. Short-faced bears. Towering at 12 feet tall when standing, these bears were aggressive scavengers and capable hunters in their own right. This predator-heavy environment meant Smilodon needed to kill fast before rivals arrived, eat quickly or defend kills aggressively, sometimes abandon kills to stronger scavengers. Such intense competition may have shaped Smilodon's muscular frame, not just for hunting but for defending its prize. 
Now we talk about raising the next generation. Smilodon cubs were born into danger, like modern cats. Their cubs were born blind and helpless. Mothers likely hid them in dens or secluded areas away from predators. Cubs learned through play and imitation, practicing the pounce, grapple, and bite. If Smilodon was social, other group members may have helped protect and feed cubs, increasing their survival odds. For millions of years, the saber-toothed cat was the unchallenged apex predator of the Americas, a master of ambush, a specialist in killing giants. But around 300,000 years ago, something changed. A new predator emerged, humans. Did these two deadly species ever meet? And if they did, who survived the encounter? This is the untold story of humans and the saber tooth encounters of survival. To understand if humans and saber tooths crossed paths, we need to examine the timeline. Smilodon roamed North America up until about 10,000 years ago, and Homo sapiens first arrived in the Americas roughly 15,000 to 20,000 years ago. This means that for at least 5,000 years, humans and saber Sabertooths shared the same continent, both hunting the same prey, moving through the same landscapes. But did they actually meet? At the end of the Pleistocene, the world was changing. The Ice Age was retreating. Environments shifted from open grasslands to forests and wetlands. Megafauna populations began declining. Humans migrated through the Mammoth Steppe, a rich grassland ecosystem that stretched from the Yukon to Patagonia. Here they would have encountered bison, mammoths, ground sloths, and smilodon, hunted the same herbivores that saber-tooths relied on, created temporary camps and settlements near water sources, prime hunting grounds for both predators. The fossil record is frustratingly silent on direct human Smilodon interactions. No known Smilodon skeletons show cut marks from human tools. No human campsites with confirmed Smilodon remains. No cave paintings or carvings that depict saber-toothed cats. Despite plenty showing mammoths and other megafauna, human remains and Smilodon fossils have been found in proximity in sites like the La Brea Tar Pits. Some Native American myths speak of giant, fanged cats, possibly ancestral memory of encounters with Smilodon. Early humans had spear points, atlatls, and stone tools capable of wounding or killing large predators. Thus, while no smoking gun exists, it's highly probable that humans and saber-tooths did encounter each other, especially as humans expanded deeper into predator territory. The roar of the saber-toothed tiger once echoed across the grasslands of the Ice Age, a terrifying call in a world of giants. But around 10,000 years ago, that roar fell silent. The end of the Pleistocene Epoch roughly 11,700 years ago. The Ice Age was retreating, glaciers melted, flooding vast regions, sea levels rose, reshaping coastlines, grasslands gave way to forests and wetlands. With these changes came the extinction of not just Smilodon, but an entire bestiary of giants. Mammoths, mastodons, giant ground sloths, glyptodont, dire wolves, Smilodon wasn't just another casualty, it was one of the last and most specialized of its kind. But what made it so vulnerable? Smilodon was the apex predator of a very specific world. It was built to kill large, slow-moving megafauna. Its muscular build, short limbs, and massive canines were ideal for ambush in open grasslands. But when climates warmed, forests expanded, reducing Smilodon's hunting advantage. Unlike more versatile predators like wolves and jaguars, Smilodon was too specialized. It couldn't adapt to small smaller, faster prey, environments requiring stamina over strength, increased competition from more generalized hunters. This is known as evolutionary over-specialization, where a species is so perfectly adapted to a specific niche that it cannot survive outside of it. But why did other big cats survive? If Smilodon died out, why did jaguars, cougars, and leopards survive? The answer lies in dietary flexibility and habitat range. Jaguars adapted to forests, rivers, and diverse prey. Cougars could eat everything from deer year to rodents. Leopards survived in varied terrains from savannas to forests. In contrast, Smilodon was tied to large prey, specific terrains. In evolution, adaptability wins. Smilodon was the master of a lost world, and when that world died, so did it. In the end, the saber tooth was a creature of perfection, perfectly suited for a world that no longer exists. It died not because it was weak, but because it was unchangeable. 